Greetings, Mind Crafters, and welcome to another Minecraft episode today. My name is Kimberly Quinn, and I'm just ecstatic to have this chat today. Uh, you know, another one that that gels and goes along with becoming the boss of your brain, because this is what Minecraft is about. It's not just a course or a or an episode of a podcast. It is a, it is a lifestyle and one that I live myself for sure. Always a work in progress, you know, one foot in front of the other. But here, here's the topic for today, which is the benefits of walking and how this has uh, just been, it's kind of just, I don't know, kind of like on the DL a lot. People just don't really talk about, you know, the benefits of walking and, and just how this can be um, so much contribute to our longevity. And I got to give a shout out to Andrew McCarthy. He He's a contributing writer for the New York Times and also the, uh, the author of Walking with Sam, which is about a father and a son walking across Spain, which is extremely, extremely cool. You know, and obviously we know about the physical benefits, right? You know, it's it's, it's good for a, a terrific stretch in the morning or the evening or whenever, right? And, you know, just being outside, breathing fresh air. If you're walking with somebody else, there's all the relationship stuff. All the right now, it's you know it's it's springtime if there is such a thing in Northern Vermont. We usually uh, call it a three season state unless you want to count mud season. But uh, one thing about April, there's a lot of really earthy, earthy smells, and they're also the farmers are busy spreading manure all over the place. There's a lot of smells going on in Vermont. Uh, it, but you know the whole you know the aromas of the of the flowers starting to to bloom, and uh, there's you know there's so there's so many there are so many physical benefits. And uh, we talked about the longevity, and I, my grandfather walked right up until the last minute and lived to be in his 80s. And I know my husband's a huge Harry Truman fan, and Harry Truman, our former president, I believe he was the 33rd president of the United States, talked a lot about walking, walked every day. So a lot of people who have some really good well-being uh, going on We'll talk that about being walkers. I mean, they just they don't do anything huge. They're not gym rats. You can do that too. But many people who kind of work walking into their daily life as much as possible, unless it's monsooning outside or something, tend to be really healthy. And it's not just physically, but it's tremendously, you know, tremendously beneficial to our mind health as well. So Andrew has some good stuff here, some good quotes. He talks about Hippocrates and how Hippocrates proclaimed that walking is man's best medicine. He says the good doctor also knew that walking provided more than mere physical benefits when he suggested, suggested if you're in a bad mood, go for a walk. If you are still in a bad mood, go for another walk. He was alluding to that so many who came after would attest that walking not only nourishes the body, but also soothes the mind while it burns off tension and makes our troubles recede into a more manageable perspective. Well, I, I mean, this is like, to me, Hippocrates is preaching to the choir right there because today happens to be Sunday. I film these out of ways, you know, to uh, try to keep on top of it. But I've actually been out in the woods twice today. I like to go out in the early morning with Giovanni, the golden retriever. And I had the luxury. I, I took, the first time I took Giovanni and we walked all over, and the sounds are loud, and the quiet is so loud. Didn't see one person. We rarely do, especially when we go way back there. But because the snow's melting and all that, the the brook, the la- the the quiet was almost loud, and and the atmosphere was was heavenly, just almost intoxicating. And the book, the brook was babbling, and the birds were chirping. I, Giovanni and I watched a few woodpeckers, uh, doing their thing. We saw a couple of. The other day we saw a, a mallard couple in the beaver pond and just all of it, nature and all of it, just taking it all in. What a great start to my day. And then today when I went back the second time, I was without Giovanni because I was going to write and I just have to watch. There's lost so much wildlife. I got to just keep an eye. It's all wonderful. But actually the, the beavers who are, who are so much fun to watch, the rumor on the street is they can not be so nice to dogs. So I got to just kind of pay attention. So the second time I went back and walked all over the place first. And also, uh, then I wrote a little bit, then I, I put it down and walked more and came back because, and within like a nanosecond, I had the, the sentences I needed to fill in the rest just from getting up, 
from where I was perched writing. I walked around right by the beaver pond. It all just came flooding. Just the creativity just flooded right in. And so Andrew um, continues with talking about Kierkegaard now, um, who says, agreed with Hippocrates when he confessed, I know of no thought so burdensome that one cannot walk away from it. And then, uh, and then talk, these are some greats here. Charles Dickens was even more direct. If I could not walk far and fast, he wrote, I think I would just explode and perish. And wow, just some quotes for the, for the, from the greats. And I have to tell you, I feel the same way. I actually, yeah. I have to have, um, uh, a little bit of a procedure done on my foot this summer and my whole thing isn't, and it's just, a, it's just a, not a big deal. It's just the recovery. That's a big deal. You got to be in a boot for, I think six weeks and yikes, because my whole thing is that I walk every single day of my life, even if it's drizzling, unless, you know, it's like a, like a monsoon because I don't want to, you know, get out there and catch, you know, bronchitis or something, but it takes a lot for me to not walk. So my whole apprehension <laughs> With, with doing the, the little foot procedure that's a drive through it's like not even a big deal, um, is, is, is that because I can't fathom, um, you know, not being able to, 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 you know, get out there. I think it's really just going to be about two weeks because the boot, there are flatter trails where I go and that'll be fine. But even two weeks, yikes, because it's so much a part of my well-being regimen and my lifestyle. It's, it's even, it's way bigger than my well, well-being regimen. It is a part of my of my lifestyle. And, you know, just as uh, Andrew McCarthy, author of Walking with Sam uh, across Spain, it, that's his book and that Walking Across Spain is that it's for me, it's both physical and mental, but I think I'd almost the mental benefits also spiritual. We got to throw that in because every single day when I'm out there in the woods, I'm, I have like a whole prayer routine. I do all that. And then I'm just, you know, practicing mindfulness. I close my eyes. I do the four, four, eight breathing sometimes listening to the brook. And so, uh, so we're going to get some supports in place so that they can, uh, help hop along, be in the woods, even, even with the boot, because it's just gotta happen. That's just it. It's like, to me, it's like breathing oxygen. I gotta, I've gotta be out in nature walking. That's just it. And Andrew continues, you know, but walking does more than keep the devil from the door. He says the Welsh, the Welsh poet, and he says, and sometimes va- sometimes vagabond, sometimes vagabond, W.H. Davies wrote, now shall I walk or shall I ride? Ride, pleasure said. Walk, joy replied. Walking buoys the spirits in a way that, re- that feels real and earned. It feels owned. And walking like a generous partner meets us more than halfway. And then... Uh, Andrew goes on to rattle off some more authors, William Wordsworth and Virginia Woolf and William Blake. And then he, and then, uh, he says, Thomas Mann assures us thoughts come clearly while one walks. And even JK Rowling, I love, love her. I love her. I love her because the Harry Potter books are just amazing. We're huge HP fans in this house. And, uh, she says that there's nothing like a nighttime stroll to give you ideas. Now, this just this is just exactly what I'm saying because I went out there again walking twice, and I, I brought my my notepad with me. There's no internet out there. I don't know if that's obvious or not, but we live way out there, so uh, the computer's worth nothing. So I was doing the old school, and then I walked, then I'd come back to it, then walk and come back to it, and it's amazing how how the combination of walking and being out in nature just absolutely just opens the door or, you know, opens the floodgates for creativity and ideas. And the thing is the creativity and the, 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 it's a, it's a clarity thing, so much clarity. So I wouldn't say I had writer's box. I was pretty in the zone, except for, I was just had like, like a little bit of a stumbling because I, I, I actually had so much creativity going on that I didn't know what I wanted to cut out and keep. So that's when I needed more clarity, walked, took a little stroll up by the beaver pond. It all just fell into place landed on the paper and I just came back and fit it in, in the, in the project I was doing. It was like a done deal all because, all because of the nice, two good, nice walks out in the woods, just brought it all together. And so 
Andrew continues talking about how he went to Spain and walking the the uh, Camino, and how previously he had, he had thought of, you know his walking being like a waste of time, slowest way to get anywhere. And then he talks about this this um, um, memorable walk. The month long walk revealed me to myself in a way nothing else had. My looping pattern of thinking, my habitual emotion cycles, my fearful nature. The Camino wore down my resistance to seeing myself. And then step after step built me back up. It altered my place in the world. And I have to second that because in addition to going out there just to be mindful with uh, Giovanni and say not just to be mindful because it's the most important thing we can really do, right? Or, you know, to be present in our lives and live deliberately, obviously. And also, like I went out there to write today. I also go out there when I'm having racy monkey mind days. And I, there was one one day a few weeks ago, I told myself this morning, I said, I'm not coming back. I'm not coming out of the woods until my mind is clear because and it wasn't, you know, when we, we assume negative, it wasn't really negative. I was, might've been a little bit of that, but there was also a lot of excitement. It was just, I was in with my, with my very fast mind, which is what I prefer to call ADHD. I was just having an ADHD day and I was just fast, fast, fast. I couldn't focus on anything. It was, I was in such a spin and so I stayed out much longer, which Giovanni loved. We did a whole long, 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 long loop all the way up and around part of the mountain. And it took a few hours for me to, you know, get centered. But wow, uh, you know, and so kind of declaring, not coming out of the woods. And thankfully, it was it was a day I could do that uh, because I came back like a, like a shiny brand new penny. And then lastly, Andrew McCarthy author of Walking with Sam, um, talks about the great naturalist John Muir, um, he says, who went uh, keenly observed, I only went out for a walk and going out, I found, was really going in. Has anyone ever imagined from ambling through nature for an hour and regretted their improved state of being? Perhaps this is what that dedicated walker, Henry David Thrill, oh my gosh, one of my favorites, was referring to when he wrote, I took a walk in the woods and came out taller than the trees. So Andrew winds it up saying, so the secret is out there. It's under the leaves on the trail. It's right there on the sidewalk. Spring has sprung. So lace up. All right, so this is sort of a natural, sort of great place to wind up. I am super hopeful that you'll grab your sneakers if you're a sidewalk urban person or your hiking boots if you're a rural person or whatever, who cares? Uh, just get out there and walk, and that's it. This is Kimberly Quinn signing off from the beautiful northern Vermont. Have a mindful walking day.